And just like that, the world rang in a new decade. The world was happy to leave 2019 and embrace the new year. But then this happened. A dangerous virus is spreading rapidly in China, and U.S. officials are very worried that it could come here. China has more than 200 confirmed cases of coronavirus, it's called, which produces pneumonia-like symptoms. Three people have already died from this illness, which has spread to at least three other Asian countries. This is a story. The story of COVID-19 at Seton Catholic Central High School. The school shut down in March of 2020. Feelings were mixed. Uh, when it first shut down in March, I was shocked. I didn't think it would actually happen. Um, but then, and I thought it would be temporary. I thought it would be just for the two weeks. And then when I found out we'd be closed for the rest of the year, I was quite devastated. I have AP Calculus um, and Algebra 2, and I had a lot of international students, and they were telling me that things weren't so good back in the other countries. So I was not surprised we were shutting down. Um, my gut was we would not be back in June, which we weren't, but I thought things would be more normal by September, but I was wrong. I think there were a lot of different emotions that kind of came through my head. Um, one was worry and just kind of trying to figure out what we're gonna do as um, educators and how are we gonna provide an education for our students. Um, I definitely didn't, see us being shut down for as long as we were as soon as we shut down in March. Um, so I didn't think we were going to be shut down as long as we were. Um, but I think that all my worry and nerves and how I felt was subsided when we finally came up with a plan on how we are going to handle it. Um, and I think we did a really good job um, the way we handled the situation at CN. Uh, I didn't realize how big of an issue it was, and I thought everything was going to be over within a couple of weeks. But when everything's continued to get worse and worse, it really hit me by surprise. Well, it was quite a surprise at first. You know, there was a lot of talk about it shutting down. I didn't think it was going to close down, but once it did, I didn't think it'd be very long. And then, sure enough, there we were, out for the rest of the year. I was very happy at the fact that we weren't going to be in school anymore. But then it turned into... A very bad experience. Um, well, I thought it was going to be temporary. Um, I thought it might just last a couple of weeks and we'd go back to normalcy, but uh, clearly not. I was concerned uh, because I needed to make sure my method of delivery was uh, up to snuff, the same on par with what I do in the classroom, understanding that the world took a turn uh, and I would have to shift and adjust on the fly. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I got my students the best I could get them under the circumstances. I thought it was um, a difficult decision that needed to be made at the time, and I think looking back, uh, we were kind of unprepared, but we did the best we could. I remember thinking that it was, it was just kind of like really, really surreal and crazy. like. I've never been through anything like that before, um, and of course, like, nobody, nobody that I know, you know, like, we've never been through this sort of thing before. It's been a long time since there was a plague in America, right? So I remember just kind of thinking that, um, you know, this was, uh, things were going to get really, really messy when it comes to school and life and everything else, but um, I was really, really glad also that we were shutting things down and, like, worrying more about people dying than how we were going to deal with school all of a sudden. Initially, I thought it was only going to be a few weeks, but when it became apparent it was going to be for the rest of the year, I wasn't happy. I The first thoughts that came to my mind was, how are we going to be able to address the education um, at Seton? We, we had a rough idea, but um, I would say panic out of anything was first um, that came to mind just on the details to make sure that we could um, offer what we do in the building. That I was gonna get an extended vacation. It was a blessing because I didn't have to go to school for a long time, but uh, eventually it started to get very sad and the, you know, there was a lot of uh, stuff to do, projects, assignments, and I was didn't really miss learning anything. Um, I thought it was going to be like a two week thing, just quick and over, 
And then it kept getting more and more pushed back, and then I realized that um, it's probably not going to open up for a while. It was scary. Besides that, there were shortages in hand sanitizer. Coronavirus driving a consumer scramble for hand sanitizer. So it affected all of us in different ways. I got closer to my kids. Like, we just got to spend more time together because we were stuck in the house with just us three. <laughs> Two of my trips were canceled. Um, I was doing a mother-daughter trip with my daughter, and then the family was going to go to Hawaii. And both of those were canceled. Um, we couldn't do as much as we used to do. My husband had cancer the summer before, so his immune system isn't great, so we need to make sure that we don't bring COVID home, so it was a little freaky. How it affected my personal life, I think just how it affected everyone across the nation, things changed. Um, it changed how I got groceries. It changed who I allowed into my own home. It changed um, how I went out and had fun. I didn't do anything anymore. Um, so it changed a lot of things. And I think mostly it just kind of isolated myself because to be safe, you have to, during this time, at least you have to isolate yourself from others, taking care of their safety and also yours. Oh, well, personally, I was very lucky. I got a one year old son at home. He actually turned one during the quarantine, so I actually got to spend a lot of time with my first son. And uh, actually, it was it was selfishly um, gave me a lot of time to spend with my family. It made me much more vigilant about where I would go and if I actually needed to go someplace, or if I could have someone or something deliver it to my home instead of going out in the public. I couldn't see my children for several months, the uh, longest I'd ever gone without seeing my kids. Um, in terms of our own personal life, uh, having lost a son in September, uh, grief was very difficult because it was just the wife and I with no outside uh, help, and so you tended to um, isolate a lot. Mostly, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty big homebody anyway, so um, it's not like I go out to bars and restaurants very often as it is in the first place. Um, you know, so maybe, maybe there were like a couple times like going to uh, like work happy hours that never ended up happening. And, um, you know, Miss Curtin left last year and we were going to throw her a big, uh, a big going away party and that never happened. So there were little occasions like that. Um, but overall, my personal life uh, wasn't really affected too much, to be honest. Oh, well, I had to try my best to be occupied. I mean, try to read more, try my hand at gardening, planting some vegetables, uh, just anything to really occupy my mind. But I think because I grew up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, we had that luxury to do other things. Having two younger kids at home who um, demanded a lot for their own um, education, so at that time it was a second grader and a preschooler, but then also having a, um, a senior in the home, uh, my mother who lives with us and my wife who is a paralegal having her office move. So we had to share the same room for an office. So it was, um, it was I would say organized chaos um, for, the, uh, for the first couple months. It didn't really, I don't do a lot of bar hopping or dancing all night and staying out all night. So I stayed home, which is normal. Got takeout pizza, watch TV, and read books. COVID also affected the way that teachers taught and the students learned. It definitely impacted my teaching style in a negative way because I, I just can't teach virtually because I need to be in the classroom with my students to be able to gauge like how they're feeling about a lesson or, or um, an activity. And we can't do that when we're virtual because, number one, I can't see my students um, sometimes because they don't have their cameras on. And I can't, and I don't have that one-on-one -on -one time with my students. So it was definitely um, a terrible way to teach. And I felt like, I felt like it wasn't teaching at all. September time frame hasn't changed much. I still stand up and teach, or if we're at home, I will use the doc camera. It was very difficult back in March because we can only teach one time a week. Um, I had about 50 to 60 kids all getting on a call. Nobody wants to ask questions in front of anybody else. 
it was challenging. Oh, that's a big one. Um, I mean, even right now, we're doing a uh, video conference call where normally we would be in person. So I think it affected all aspects. My my job, my career is very personable. Um, I talk with students daily. That's kind of all I really do for a living is I am in conversation. So instead of being face-to-face -face and in person and having that like personal touch um, when I'm talking with students, it's now over electronics and it's over video and it's over email and it's phone calls and it's not as, um, I would say, personal. So it definitely changed how I do my job in that sense. It was definitely harder to learn, but and I found myself struggling. It was trying to stay focused during classes and I had to take way more time to study. Well, we had to go remote, as everybody knows. Um... Obviously, phys ed's a little interesting. We uh, tried to do as much working out as possible. We tried to encourage the kids to do workouts at home. Everybody has different stuff at home, so workouts were very different from each other. Um, but uh, teaching-wise, it just really transferred from, from uh, in-person to on the computer and communicating with the kids through the, through the Internet. Well, we all went remote, and I wasn't obtaining the information as well as I was in school. Well, obviously I had to adapt to um, the online learning. I prefer learning in school, but um, it wasn't too bad. And, um, I got my uh, grades down, so overall it wasn't too bad. I sit a lot more, uh, or rather I sat a lot more, uh, because I normally am up and about. Uh, I couldn't do that without carrying a laptop around with me. Lockdown affected my teaching style because uh, a lot of the classes that I teach are performance-oriented classes, except for theology. So I had to become much more um, computer literate, and I had to do a lot of research on uh, YouTube videos and things of that nature, and uh, become very creative with what I had to do with the classes that were strictly performance. That's another one where it's like not really too much at all, um, just because I've talked to a lot of other teachers about this. It's been really interesting. Um, the actual way that I teach both Latin and the history classes doesn't really doesn't really make like a huge, huge difference, um, like in terms of like whether you're listening to me online or if you're listening to me in person. Um, even even things like uh, like the group projects that I do in history classes, um, even that's not a problem. People are just talking from home instead of talking in the classroom. Um, so that part of it I found didn't really change that much, actually. Well, it's a lot easier to teach in the classroom and to move around than teaching at home. Uh, the first year, well, m the last year, March till June, was not very good because you get the students were just getting recordings. But for myself. Uh, not a fan of it. I think the toughest thing was not seeing the students, only seeing them through possibly smaller Zooms or just um, at coming into the classroom, um, just kind of unannounced into the actual uh, virtual classroom. The toughest part for me was not being around the kids because um, as everyone knows, I'm a very visible principal and I'd rather be around the students more than sitting in an office. So it kind of got turned to sitting in an office and not seeing kids. It made me sit which is not how I teach. I don't know how anyone can teach sitting down, but I don't. I'm always standing and walking around and gesturing, and it was very hard to do that. Uh, it definitely messed with me. In math, I do know that I did not learn really anything. Thankfully, we had no finals, so I didn't really have to use my knowledge on that stuff. But I pretty much didn't really learn that much just because it was much harder for me to learn online. I am not good at online learning. I need more in-person like contact, so it was really hard for me. When we first started online school, it was not my favorite. I had to teach myself a lot of the topics, and it was hard for me, and I definitely prefer in-person than online. Usually I do a lot more in-person things than with the lockdown. We were doing everything on Zoom. So we were having, I meet with the principals once a week. So we were having principal meetings on Zoom. I meet with a lot of different staff members. 
we had just endless meetings on Zoom one after the other. And then the other piece was that I, um, you know, you don't always have everything you need in terms of um, your paperwork. Sometimes you're just thinking, oh, I really wish I had that report and it's in my office. So it, that made it hard sometimes. And not being able to sit down with people with paperwork in front of you and talk about things, that could be a little hard at times. But, you know, we made it work. We did what we had to do. I cannot do online school for crap. Does not work for me. Yeah. Grades just plummet right down. Yep, me too. But the teacher that had it worst was Mrs. Sue. She actually contracted COVID and here's her story. Um, it was really bad. I didn't think it would affect me as the way it did. Like I thought I would, I always said like if I got it, I would probably be asymptomatic or maybe sick for a couple of days, but um, I'm going on, this is now my eighth week um, and I'm definitely a lot better than I was, but I'm still dealing with some symptoms. So I was out of school for six weeks, six and a half weeks. In the hospital was great. Everyone was very attentive and but I would say as far as like outpatient care, even like my primary doctors, like they were very, I would say, I mean, they were being cautious, but at the same time, they like, they didn't want me in the office. They only wanted to do virtual visits. And I at times needed them to look at me like when I wasn't contagious anymore. Like I needed them to see that my knees were swollen to the point where I couldn't get out of bed. Like I needed them to see me and take my vitals and stuff like that. And they didn't want me in the office, which I get, but if I'm no longer contagious, I'm not sure why they wouldn't let me in the office. And then also, like, nobody knows enough about the disease at this point because it's so new um, that they really don't have anything for me. Like, they don't have any advice for me. They don't know what to do with me and what the symptoms that I'm having. So I feel very, like, I don't know. There's really no hope. Plenty of things changed. Things that we were used to had to be adapted to fit the restraints of social distancing. The cafeteria now looks like this. A classroom now looks like this. Sports are a big part of the community at Seton Catholic Central. And the winter championships were just around the corner before the pandemic hit. Well, personally, I'm a sports guy. I think sports are just as important as any other classroom class. All the kids enjoy phys ed. They need the activity to burn off energy so they can sit still a little longer in the classroom. It was quite a bummer to find out the sports seasons were canceled. I, th I think uh, a lot of kids um, were affected by it, and I think they'll be affected by it this year. And I think sports will be affected for years to come from it. So I was not happy about it from a sports perspective, but when it comes down to it, uh, sports is not always what life is about. And... Um, I think maybe it might have been the right thing to close sports, even though I don't want that, or didn't. Um, I was sad to see sports go, but I definitely understand why they took them away, and I think it was for the better, even though it was sad to not be doing the sport. I was so mad, because I'm a person that likes to do a lot of sports, and it completely messed with my schedule. Um, well, I was pretty sad when they got canceled, you know. I do sports like every year, or so, and it keeps me in shape. And um, I and they're not they're not having sports this year, so well, I mean, so far, but hopefully that changes. Um, last year, you know, I was kind of happy that sports were canceled, uh, just because me, I was cut from a varsity lacrosse team, which it's very sad. I know, I know. Um, but I wasn't even gonna do it anyways. But um, that was kind of happy for me. And yeah, I mean, hopefully we get to see some basketball this year and hopefully, you know, winter sports start playing out and stuff like that. I was super upset because I play uh, soccer and I run track and we were like already practicing for track and then it got canceled and um, we just never did it again. And then for the new year, um, it just keeps getting pushed and more and more pushed back and mask, masks kind of make it hard. Besides the initial shock of a worldwide shutdown, people also had some feelings about how the local government tried to protect us. I think we closed, especially in Broome County, we closed before our numbers got high. So I, I think as far as our county goes, yes, I think we handled it well. 
I thought they did an okay job. I would have liked to have seen overall us closing down a lot sooner, and I'm probably one of the very few people who says that. We definitely handled it better than other states, and I'm sure there were some states that handled it better than we did. I think everyone probably has their own opinion on how things were handled, and I think hindsight's always 2020. I always look at things in an optimistic way when I can. And I think that things could have always been worse. When we shut down, I think that was a good thing to prevent people from um, being hospitalized from more deaths occurring. So I think we took the safety of our students into consideration and families and did what we had to do. I think now it's kind of just a, not a waiting game, but it's kind of like day by day. We don't know what's going to happen because we don't know exactly the course of this pandemic. Well, you never know. I think we did okay. I'm not a big politician, so I'm not really sure exactly, but uh, it seemed to get closed down pretty quickly and uh, masks were all required. I think New York State did a pretty decent job with it. I initially was. I think that uh, they're getting um, a little bit more out of control and I think uh, the governor is getting more handsy with things and should leave it to local governments. In general, yes. Um, I think the way, the way that Cuomo handled it and the way that Jason Garner handled it locally, I think overall was really, really good. Um, kind of up to the beginning of the school year, I would say. And... Um, you know, so for those first six months, you know, I'd, I'd give them, I'd say good job. Right. But, um, ever since schools opened, um, I think there is, there's a lot more apathy towards like being proactive about p keeping people safe. Like even right now, school's a lot different and there's no after school activities and like all that stuff. Right. But like the numbers, the numbers, uh, are like way worse now than they ever were back in March or over the summer but for some reason we're still going to school and people are going to work like normal instead of staying home. Um, so something, I personally think something needs to happen about that. We need to be paying people to stay home, but um, it almost feels like we've almost like given up on it. I'm comfortable with the state government. I'm not comfortable with what people decide to ignore. Um, I am comfortable on how they handled the virus um, without getting into too much politics of it all. Um, I, I was um, very impressed on how New York turned the numbers around. Um, but again, it's, um, you know, there's a lot of other things that would entail that I won't get into in political stuff. But uh, I think overall, it was uh, good. I think, I don't want to say they, they, they closed the schools too quickly, but I think um, they didn't come back to talk about schools until July, which didn't give us much time to plan for the following September. The local and federal governments handle the situation in very different ways. I feel like they should have put out more measures um, for states to follow our guidelines, and they really didn't, um, so there was no support, much support from the federal government. I would prefer living in a state, I think, for my state to make its own decisions, um, because what's happening in New York isn't necessarily happening down in Florida, isn't happening in North Carolina, isn't happening across the country in California. So um, I think the way states handled it, um, to me, on a more personal level, is more important. Um, but I am comfortable with the way they handled it, yes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if anybody could have done anything different. I'm not saying it was done right or wrong. I just don't know if anything different could have happened. The whole world pretty much shut down the same way, and we kind of followed suit. So yeah, I think the federal government did a good job. Well, they didn't handle it, um, I guess is the obvious thing to say. Well, not only did they not handle it at all, um, they tried to tell us that it's not even real in the first place, um, which is really, really crazy. Um, that, that stimulus check that everybody got and the Paycheck Protection Act uh, that went through, that was like nothing uh, compared to like what people in other developed countries got. And um, then we heard about how it was a hoax uh, nonstop for months and months and months and months and months while the body count is just piling up. Um, so that was just a, that's, that's a disaster, absolute disaster. They 
just had no plan for it. Not the first time. I mean, same thing happened with the Spanish flu. Um, the federal government, um, I would say yes, because I think I, I hold it almost to the same point of view as the local government. I think um, it is the federal government um, being able to push out, um, let's say, pushing out the extra hospitals, the mobile hospitals and so on, I thought was great. I think, once again, the only issue was is the federal government and the state government weren't working together as a team. We have entered the new normal, but there are still some concerns with the way that we teach and learn. Um, well, I was worried about our, our safety and health of not just me, but my students as well, because even though we have masks on and we are social distancing, there are times when um, kids don't follow the rules, so we can't really um, ensure 100% that we're all going to be safe. I'm worried about bringing the virus home to my husband who thinks that he is Iron Man, but he's not. I'm mostly worried about uh, like how our students and families are affected. Um, right now it's kind of a very up in the air process. Um, one day you might be in person learning and everything's great. And the next day you might have to be learning from home for 14 days. Um, so I just think the stability of our education right now is making me a little concerned and worried because I just want to make sure that students, um, their physical well-being, emotional well-being, um, and their mental health is being taken care of. And I just know that not having a good basis of structure um, always affects their health. Well, my wife's pregnant. I got another baby on the way and a son at home. I think that's the only thing I worry about. I don't worry about myself too much. I think uh, I'll probably be able to hopefully fight off uh, the coronavirus. But uh, I worry about my wife and my unborn baby and my, uh, my new baby. I want to make sure that I can deliver the material in a way that my students will comprehend it in a meaningful and lasting way. Uh, we still have to make adjustments for kids learning at home. Uh, but if I can provide them with the foundations that they need for success in high school uh, this year under these circumstances, then I'll consider it a successful year. I am not worried about getting the virus. I think I actually, my son was in China in December of last year, came home. Two weeks later, he had something very terrible. We gave him um, <clears throat> a Zithromax pack. And... We think he had the virus, uh, and then my wife and I also got the same thing he got, so I think I've already had it. Well, mostly I'm getting worried about people getting sick and dying. I mean, like, in a, in a very, very real way, um, there's a big part of me that is worried about everybody's social development and mental health and emotional development, um, and of course, like, their academic, their academic development, like, especially you, um, uh, especially like you students, I worry a lot about that because you guys are missing out on an awful lot at a very like formative, important time in terms of your social and academic development, right? I don't know why any school is open right now. I don't think any school should be open right now. Um, regardless of anything, we should not be opening anything until there's a vaccine uh, that everybody uh, can get. But um, I worry all the time about people getting sick and dying. Like, um, we've had several cases here. Um, you know, Miss Sue was in the hospital for a very long time, right? Like, you know, at what point does our need for in-person babysitting turn into being very, very reckless and fast and loose with children's and adults' adult lives? That, that part is very disappointing to me. Uh, well... Same thing as every year, but of course now you have people who do get sick. You still have to worry about if some psychopath decides to shoot up the school. We still have that issue. But every year, a teacher has to worry. That's our job. Um, ultimately, it's just the students' comfort. I, am, um, I know there's a lot of anxiety with staff and students, so ultimately that's my biggest concern is just the mental aspect at this point. I think we have enough precautions in place for physical and uh, for um, to prevent transmission. My concern always is the mental exhaustion for students and also staff. Not a lot. We all are wearing masks. We're staying socially distant. 
We're cleaning desks and chairs. So I'm not really that concerned. There are also concerns about how the world will operate in the new normal. I feel like um, I'm worried that it's go going to get worse and more people are going to get sick and more people are going to die because we're not taking this virus as seriously as we need to. I'm afraid that in 10 years we're going to be sitting here with masks on going, do you remember when we used to be able to walk around without masks? Do you remember when we used to be able to travel whenever we wanted? I'm afraid the economy is not going to come back. I'm afraid of a lot of things. Mostly, I'm worried about when, um, when I guess we can resume to feeling 100% safe again. Um, so I guess I'm worried about how long, like the longevity of this pandemic. How long are we going to have to um, monitor our gatherings? How long are we going to have to monitor our education system? How long are we going to have to monitor? Um, where we can go. Um, I just think that a lot of things during um, childhood right now are being kind of stripped away. Um, and I think that if we can preserve and hold on to a lot of the things that kind of bring out the kid in us, bring us joy still, that's really important. So I'm just worried that this is going to last a lot longer than I think a lot of us think. I hope that we do not get hurt financially for a long time from this. That's the only thing I fear. I hope that we have not gone into uh, too much debt as a country. I would like, today was the first vaccination uh, of a person, so I would like to see that multiplied by every human on the planet. The lack of faith and the lack of peace, and the lack of unity? Well, with regard to the country as a whole, um, I guess in terms of COVID, um, I mean, you know, New, New York is starting to get bad again, but pretty much anywhere south and west of the New York-Pennsylvania border is just getting completely decimated. Um, you know, there are... <laughs> oh, I could tell you about a lot of news stories that I've read, of course, about it, but... Um, you know, it's just people need to wear masks. People need to take things seriously. People need to shut things down. People need to, um, you know, get into a mindset where, you know, we need to look out for each other and actually, like, be a part of a society. Um, it seems like right now all we're doing is just, like, watching Trump sabotage everything until Biden uh, actually takes office and then hoping and praying that we're all going to have a vaccine a year from now. Um you know, it's, the, the vaccine situation seems promising, but to just sit around and wait and let the bodies pile up is just, like, completely irresponsible and immoral and whatever other language you use, you know? I'm truly hoping that it's now, well, it's December 1st, that by January 20th, this is all going to seem like a bad dream that we can finally wake up from. Um, I get concerned about um, the financial aspects, considering we always hear about the schools um, losing funding and losing up to 20% of the funding, the public schools, because that eventually trickles down to the Catholic schools, because we do depend on the state, on our local public schools for certain grants and certain uh, title money. So I get worried about just um, the cutting of academics and education in New York State. There are people out there that do not put everybody else's health ahead of their own, um, that they think that they're being infringed upon when they are not. It is for the good of the country that we wear masks, that we socially distance. I think the government should be helping more financially with those people who are losing their jobs and losing time but um, that hasn't happened yet. In the end, the students and faculty of Seton Catholic Central can and have bounced back from this. If this community is strong enough to get through a pandemic, this community can get through anything it faces as long as it works together. Mm -hmm.